Good morning. It is August 27th, um, 2nd, sorry, August 22nd, uh, 8.15 approximately in the morning. Monday morning, it's raining, cats and dogs. My baby is uh, getting her wish today. It's raining good and she's going to be able to uh, enjoy a relaxing day inside today, I think. Uh, because down where she's at, it's raining good, so I wanted to give her that. You know, I love you, babe. Anyway, um, let me get down to business. Uh, those of you who've been following my uh, series, uh, the playlist, B BM <coughs> MBFUMM, my uh, playlist uh, depicting the battles that I've had, been up against to obtain the right to use medical marijuana for medicinal purposes, uh, it's been a long fight and it's been hard and I know it's been a long time since I uh, last updated this series um, that's because I had something very very big and wrong happen uh, back on in June and then an even stronger blow to the cause and to me both uh, again here just last month uh, or at the beginning of this month. Uh, holy cow! I want to. I want to start just by saying that uh, each of my uh, videos in this series are come with the description that I am up against the two most powerful uh, corporations on the planet, entities, uh, you name it, uh, the United States government and. We'll just say the uh, uh, what do you call it capitalist <laughs> side of America, you know, corporate interests. Um, boy, listen to this. Um, finally, finally, I had an opportunity that I could have went to the deep course in Presque Isle which is a three-day thing, I guess. It's over a weekend. It uh, costs $300. It's a step in getting your license back after an OUI, which I had a first offense OUI back in February of last year. And is now, what, 17, 18 uh, months later, um, into a 90-day driver, driver's license suspension period. Um, and I still haven't got my license back. I had an opportunity. I could have done something big in the direction of getting that back just recently and was robbed of that opportunity based on the fact that I use a medicine that uh, so many people in this country are making a profit off of being illegal that uh, it's just, it's incredible. Okay, listen, this is what happened. Uh, I was scheduled to do this deep course on the weekend there, and uh, just the week prior to that, uh, the date was the 7th, uh, no, it was the 28th, the 28th of July, okay, the 28th of July, um, at Looks like 19, so it's no 1700, so that'd be 5 o'clock in the evening. Uh, an officer came to the house, the apartment here, to uh, issue a new summons because my court date had been changed from for the original offenses of cultivating and uh, reckless conduct that were charged on me back in May, on the 3rd of May, at uh, 15.05, so that'd be 3.05 in the afternoon. Uh, and when he came, uh, although I had no usable marijuana at the time, I'd been quite some time without medicine, as a matter of fact, and was given this Tramadol H. CL 50 milligram tablets to be used one or four hours as needed or whatever. Uh, 
instead of the medicine that I require. And of course, this man-made thing here has some very, very unpleasant and in fact dangerous side effects. There are uh, none the least of which being uh, severe dry mouth, um, constipation, ir uh, a very difficult time with urinating, and uh, a complete loss of, I would say, not complete, but a very high loss of cognitive ability. Um, when you're using this, you become basically a zombie. And that's the way I can describe it. Um, and along with that comes this feeling of dread and despair. So it, it, it causes you to go into depression as well. So even though it does have a mild pain relieving effect, the side effects that go along with this are horrible, horrible, horrible. And these give it, and I was giving these a hundred at a time, refillable six times, a hundred at a time, refillable six times. Or this is, and this is an addictive medicine too. Okay, uh, not as addictive as some others, but it is addictive and. For a person like myself who has been addicted to different kinds of very, very powerful pain relievers for, for a very long time, uh, I really don't want to be messing around with something that is going to take that. It's like a, it's like a Russian roulette, okay, with me. There's uh, playing around with addictive stuff is not right. It's not something I should be doing. and, and Especially not when I when you look at all the harmful side effects that go along with that. Okay, now the thing is, my medicine is marijuana, and unfortunately, until it's legalized federally, and I don't mean just uh, um, you know like Obama has written this um, signing statement saying that federal charges won't be pressed. Or upheld or or pursued in states that have adopted medical marijuana laws okay that's what I consider to be dancing around the issue we need to get the federal government out of the way and altogether because let's face it the Constitution doesn't doesn't allow for the federal government to come into my home my private space, my sanctity, sanctuary, my peace of mind here. The police came into my home in spite of these new laws governing my right to privacy with, through medical necessity. And because I don't have certification, now think of this people, my issues that require the use of medical marijuana stem from injuries that I've sustained throughout the entirety of my life. There isn't uh, anything that I do if it requires movement on my part it causes me pain. And this kind of constant reality check in the pain index also causes depression and hopelessness and you know especially when everything that's been tried with you has only caused very severe problems except for the one thing marijuana Nothing, not a single side effect from marijuana is harmful to me in any way, shape, or form. In fact, the side effects that I do enjoy from the, the use of my medicine and med medical marijuana are that there is no depression. Depression doesn't exist, period. It is not there when I'm using my medicine correctly. And there's almost no incorrect way to use it. It's been medically proven, factual, factually proven scientifically that marijuana cannot be overdosed. 
in any way, shape, or form. It cannot kill you, no matter what length of time you use it. Um, the sheer magnitude of the amount of marijuana that it would take to kill a person is impossible to ingest in any way, shape, or form at this time. I mean, they <laughs> I would hate to see somebody come up with a way to condense 1,565 pounds of marijuana down into a usable form for one person, but that's what it would take to kill you, and it can't be done at this time, so we can safely say that marijuana is safe and effective. When I, when I am properly medicated, I not only enjoy a life without the depression, that goes along with my constant pain, but I also enjoy a certain amount of relief from the pain, okay? It doesn't relieve the pain in such a way as a numbing effect, like what the, the narcotics and the, the painkillers that the doctors and, the, and the, the government and the police and everybody, everybody around would rather have you take these horrible, horrible things than to use this one God-created medicine that doesn't turn you into a zombie. In fact, it opens up the creative pathways of your mind and makes you more creative and more productive in what you can do, what you're gifted with and can do. Uh, those of you who know me and been following this series know that this is not just any casual uniform to me. This is, in fact... A, as much of a uniform to me as my military uniform was when I was in the army. My BDUs, these are my casual BDUs and I'm in these because in spite of the fact that state laws have been passed so that my doctor of choice, any doctor in this state, has the right to prescribe the medicine marijuana to me to use. And there is no longer any obligation, thanks to the new law passed by Governor uh, uh, Page, the Page, sorry, um, thanks to the new law, Governor LePage has made it so that in the state of Maine, it is no longer a necessity to report or uh, license or, you know, to register with the state the use or user who needs the medical marijuana. This information is now private, privileged information between doctor and patient as it should be, as any other medicine is and as marijuana should be as well. Thank you, Governor Page, for doing that. However, it did not help me with getting my medicine legally prescribed to me because the doctor told me, even though he no longer has to register it and it can be private, privileged information between us, if I am uh, checked by police authorities or anyone else for that matter that wanted to uh, look into me and why I'm using medical marijuana or you know they would uh, see that I have the medical per permission to do it and of course th even though the doctor's name isn't subscribed to it or whatever it in some way they can still go after my doctor so it has to be a certain doctor that can do this with a certain, I don't know, he doesn't take any insurance. He's, he's located down in Hollowell. I'm going to see him on the 25th here, Thursday. Um, it's a long ride. Holy cow, it's a little over three, 400 miles almost. Almost 400 miles one way. So that's a trip to go down and see this one doctor in the state of Maine or his practice uh, so that I can be certified to use medical marijuana. Now unfortunately this is coming late because prior to being able to do that and 
and missing my opportunity with the deep course, I had this happen to me. A neighbor of mine who was a, a self-proclaimed drug addict found out what I was doing here and that I was trying to uh, take care of myself by growing my own medicine. This idiot fails to realize that I am not into the illegal drug business. I, in fact, have hated the fact for as long as I've had to use this system that I had to get my medicine through illegal channels. I've hated that fact all along. That's always been a real problem with me dealing with, okay? Um, I thought and should be, according to the United States Constitution, if I read, read you know, if I am familiar enough with it, uh, that in the sanctity of my own home, uh, I can pretty much do whatever I want so long as I'm not harming anyone else. Um, this is my home. I live alone. Me and my cat, Mr. Mitten's here. We are the only occupants of this apartment, and uh, we like it that way for now. I mean, I got a girl who's, oh, I cannot wait to have her with me. Oh, that's as soon as I can get this mess taken care of, she's finally going to be with me. We're going to be together finally and have a chance to live a life, make a family, you know. But i got to deal with this first, okay? So I've got... Originally, the two charges of uh, cultivating marijuana and reckless conduct that, as I was saying, my neighbor, who was a self-proclaimed addict, uh, and found out what I was doing here, thought that he could uh, just abuse uh, my hospitality and... I guess in ways force me to use my medicine with him for recreational purposes. Um, he came over one day, that was on the uh, 3rd of June, and it was uh, maybe noon when he showed up because earlier that day I had uh, a friend, another friend, a real friend come over to visit me and uh, he had gifted me with some medicine. and. For that reason, this friend will forever remain nameless. But as I sat here after that friend had left, uh, only maybe 45 seconds at the most after that friend had left this premises, this neighbor who knew most likely that uh, I had been, you know, had received some medicine or in so, something like that, there he came over and uh, just helped himself into my home. I owed him forty dollars. This was true, and when he first showed up, that was his reason for being here. Okay, um, to collect the forty dollars that I owed him. Right away, I I gave him that. There was no problem. It was owed, and I I gave it. Um, as I turned around, now he was standing at the door. Per, approximately where the camera is positioned now. Uh, he was standing there and uh, I brought the money to him, handed it to him, handed it to him and came back. I was busy um, trying to get my cucumbers planted into pots, uh, little starter pots there, my seeds planted. And that's really I was all I was wanting to do. It was quiet morning. I had the news on, not, not really doing much and, and planting that. And I had this little bit of medicine that was gifted to me. Well, of course, he smelled that when he came up here to collect his $40, which seeded the fact that I had just gotten some medicine. And when I turned around to come back over here, I did not invite him in, but he came in anyway, just as I was walking back, he came in, by the time I got to this chair to sit down, he was sitting there already, right there in the chair. And he was, it was just a smile and, and, and just looking, because I had my medicine right here in a baggie that he could see. And 
didn't he just know that, oh boy, he's going to be getting high today, right? And, you know, this fact just pissed me off because, you know, uh, I'd been here for a couple months at this time, and by this time I'd figured out that really the only time I see him is when I have medicine. And, you know, I was getting really tired of that. Um, my medicine is expensive elite, through illegal channels, and dangerous to obtain and the risk is high enough there and, and, and I don't want to have to do it any more than I have to and with him over here and him and his girlfriend over here uh, using up my medicine at just just because <laughs> is not working you know I mean the medicine is gone and and I need that you know I don't use it for that purpose I use it for medical purposes purposes and anyway um, he sits here for a good two hours talking about how sucky his life is how, how angry he is at the system because now he they're insisting that he gets some kind of a job instead of just soaking off of welfare him and his girlfriend living in this building, him in one apartment, supposedly, her in the other part in apartment, supposedly, both collecting state and federal funds to live the way they're living, and he's living with her, with that apartment on the second floor up here, basically as a storage room because I know this because he was letting me use it as my storage room when I first moved in and he never stayed a day in that apartment um, I guess they used to stay in that apartment and the first floor apartment was the one that was empty but something happened there and they decided to move to the lower floor and that's where it's been you know there and they're not supposed to be living like this they're supposed to be, he's supposed to be living in his apartment and she's supposed to be living in hers and from what I heard there were some legal problems between them there, and he wasn't even supposed to be anywhere around her anyway, or something like that. But anyway, uh, he's here just cussing and screaming because the state's now starting to insist that he get a job somewhere, and I'm and just kind of crying and complaining, and pissing and moaning. I got tired of that and started saying, "Well, okay, if you're." I asked him to leave there, you know, politely three times, and he just sat there like I was in his living room and not the other way around. And um, each time he just kind of just went over his head and just kept going on about how miserable he is and, and, and the fact he's got to go to work. So I said, okay, finally, uh, after the third time I asked him to leave, I said, well, geez, if he's going to sit there and force me to listen to his garbage, then maybe he wouldn't mind me sitting here telling him why he's so upset and pissed off and, and his life sucks so much, okay? So I started telling him, you're half my age and you're in perfect health. Yes, you're a redhead and light-skinned, which means you have a sensitivity to the sun and can't be outside, but there's a lot of inside jobs to do. I said I would work at McDonald's just to have something, uh, an income coming in to show my family my girl and my newborn son uh, that I'm a supporter and that I, I am you know a productive person in society and show be that for this family but no here you are cussing and complaining using the system t illegally and living scot-free of anything the most I ever see you do is walk outside once a day with your son to the path in the back and, and, and back and the rest of the day you two or you three are in that apartment like Kermit's. I never see you guys near, except when I have medicine. Boom, here you sit. And here you want to stay until my medicine's gone and then poof you'll be gone too and then till the next time. Well, he said he didn't like hearing all this. So he, he, he looks at me, man, you know, you got a big mouth. And I just happen to have a knife sitting next to me. Now, people, don't get me wrong. I don't mean to hurt anybody. I didn't mean to, I wasn't going to hurt him, okay? But the thing is, I have been hurt 
many ways, many times, many places, and many very serious ones, okay? Both feet crushed and reconstructed, my back broken several times before they finally fused it, and now it's broke again. Well, herniated disc, okay, might as well be broken. Hurts like hell when I do anything, okay? So, and I'm almost, I'm 48, okay, pushing 50, and this guy's half my age, bigger than me, quite muscular, and in perfect health from what I can see. So, it behooves me now that he's begun to insult me uh, and is becoming irate in my home that I should maybe put pick up my knife and make sure that he couldn't hurt me in any way and then order him out of the house a fourth time now but this time with some reinforcement in hand and in stern language get the fuck out now okay he gets up, walks out, turns with a grin and says, you fucking coward. And I said, don't come back. And he left. Okay, I figured, good, the, the problem is gone. I can get back to planting my cucumbers. And by this time, I hadn't really noticed it. But one of the other neighbors, who is a very cool person, came in and had it. You know, he came to the door and I motioned him to come in and he sat down here not realizing what he was getting into. <laughs> you know, this poor guy is, <coughs> got, is, is slow minded, okay, but very good person and very, I mean, this guy's very good person, okay. I don't mind having him around at all. He comes in and sits down and now here this is all going on, okay, and he witnesses me forcing this young man out of my house by, you know, under threat of knife if he was to do something stupid. And that's the only reason I had the knife in my hand, people, is because if he decided to do something stupid, I wanted him to know that he was going to get hurt by this thing I had in my hand and was not about to let go of, okay? And, it, you know, I was holding it basically like this. It was a knife similar to this one, and I was holding it like this. So, so that is very much a defensive position. If he strikes at me, he's going to have to get through that to hurt me, right? So that's just defending myself. I'm not holding it like this as per se to hurt him. You know, I'm just wanting to make sure he doesn't hurt me. And this is the way I had it. Well, apparently he decided that uh, he was going to go downstairs and tell his girlfriend that I had threatened him with a knife. Now, I guess I'm betting that he didn't tell her why or how or anything like that or what actually happened. Uh, but she decides to call the police, but not you know, before calling the landlord first. You know, I guess that she decided, well, okay, we'll get back at him calls the landlord and of course the landlord calls me and I tell him what happened and he says well is there any problem I said no he's gone now it's fine with me I don't care you know he's the situation is under control you know maybe he stays where he's at I stay where I'm at in a couple of days everything the dander s settles to the floor and everything's fine right we go back to a normal life nobody's you know swinging this way or that but that wasn't good enough for him, okay? The, the, the landlord was happy with my explanation there. I said, okay, fine, you know, it's, there's nothing to worry about. Well, they see, uh-oh, that didn't get him in any trouble. The landlord didn't do anything about it. Okay, so let's call the police. Now they, out of revenge for throwing this drug addict out of my house the way I did, out of revenge, this guy calls the police and tells them that I threatened him with a knife. And, by the way, he's growing marijuana in his house. Don't the police come over here with a Border Patrol agent. And, of course, I had been using my medicine so they could smell it. it you know, the smell travels. So when they come up around the corner of the stairs and, and you know, came towards my apartment, they, my door was 
locked at the time because I didn't want him coming back in on me, but uh, they knock on the door knowing already that I'm using marijuana in here because they could smell it. So I open the door and they ask, hey, uh, what's this about the knife and this, that, and the other, and I explain to them what happened. And they ask me, okay, do you want to press charges on him? And I'm like, no, there's no need for that. He's He's down there where he belongs, I'm up here where I belong, and everybody's happy, there's no reason to go any further than that. And they agree that he agrees, no charges need to be pressed. Well, I'm asking myself, why then did you call the goddamn cops? Anyway, they tell me that he is not interested in pressing charges either, and I say, okay. And uh, I had some stuff, of course, stored in his ghost apartment here that he's collecting uh, off the state and federal funds from uh, and he wanted me to remove those from them they, they informed me of that and I said okay no problem just uh, uh, if we, we, you can do this anytime if he wants to do it now we can do it now and they said yes we would kind of like that so I said okay no problem I'll be, just let me know when he's ready and the apartment's open and I'll start moving my stuff out they said okay and I went to shut the door well just as I was closing the door, the officer says, you know, by the way, where are the plants? I can't argue with the man. I can't hide the fact that I'm using the medicine in my apartment. He could smell it, obviously. It was sitting over here. He hadn't seen it yet, but it was there, and he was coming in and would see it. And what is the point of raising a fuss? when you know full well that you're doing what you're doing and they're they're going to come in and see that and so i just said hey he started to the officer started to say you know you don't we don't need a warrant we can smell it and i i told him i stopped him said hey that's not necessary come on in i'll show you what i have so they come in and walked straight behind me into my room in the back that i had set up as a grow room and uh, under my lights I have had eight small seedlings they were eight inches tall probably uh, maybe three nodes each healthy plants good stuff uh, medical um, they were growing well and it wasn't going to be long I would be able to finally not have to buy my medicine through illegal channels anymore I would actually be producing my own medicine right there in my home and to harm who well they charged me with reckless conduct even though he wasn't pressing any charges for the fact that I threw him out by knife point, they decided they would. And they charged me with cultivating marijuana, of course. Now, the officers were very professional. They were very straight up individuals. And I got to tell you, professional, very professional. Um, we sat and spoke for a while. I spoke with the um, the border patrolman first for a while. As I sat here, he stood where you're standing, and the uh, the the sheriff went into the back to search the the grow room and to look at everything in there. And um, we t I, I spoke with the border patrolman, and we talked about my fight my struggles, how hard I've been fighting for the right to use my medicine, and how long, and the things that I've done and had to go through. And um, he was very sympathetic with my plight. Um, I don't know if he agreed or disagreed with, with uh, the, the fact that medical marijuana is a reality um, he never said one way or another. The other officer did, the sheriff. He, at first, when he was finished searching and pulling the plants up, uh, he came out with a plastic bag full of my plants. And I knew right away, okay, my girls are gone. And 
um, anyway, I, um, I just, uh, I wanted to cry because what was going on here was so wrong to me, you know, I'm working so very hard just to survive a life of pain and, and anxiety and, and I'm not hurting anyone. I'm just trying to take care of myself. My medicine is different from what the corporate industries say is medicine, but it is medicine nonetheless. And whether or not I am certified by the state, by some doctor that says I actually do have a need for it, I mean, it's already been proven. I have here statements from my doctor that I do suffer, in fact, from severe pain, chronic, severe chronic pain, and his referral to the doctor that issues the certification for the use of medical marijuana um, here specifically for the use of alternative medicines, i.e. marijuana. I have these documents here now to show that there is a doctor, a medical doctor here in this area, very close, provided to, to me um, by my insurance caseworker. <laughs> um, I had to have an insurance caseworker find a doctor to help me with this because I, I was just not able to find one at all anywhere within within a, a decent reasonable range you know and um, so they provided me with one and he has given me these documents to show that there is a medical need for the use of marijuana even though he himself cannot or will not um, prescribe it to me even though we've got these new laws that say he can and he has his reasons but on what was it the 25th I think it was uh, the 28th June July 28th another officer comes to my door and he, he gives me another set of citations. He says he's there to issue a new set, uh, set of citations to replace the ones, the original ones, because my court date had been moved up a month uh, to the 9th of September, which is coming up very soon. Um, and, of course, I, idiot me, I made a big mistake. I thought that for sure, um, knowing what the officers knew as a result of our discussion we had here that day when they took my plants, that I was not into the illegal drug market. I was doing everything I could to avoid the propagation of that market by taking care of myself in my own home and I thought that they realized that and they weren't going to bother me and they weren't going to come back for any reason and I made a stupid decision to put my plants I had at the time now restarted a couple of plants these were just barely little seedlings now okay but um, just restarted some new plants and I had them out on the back porch getting some real sun like an idiot um, well of course when this officer came to issue me this new set of sun was just changing my court date he comes out of the stairwell and right there in front of him is some marijuana plants so bingo I get another set of citations and this time he hauls me off to jail the first time I was able to bail out with $50 bail and uh, 
this time no dice let's go straight to jail um, he took me down to Caribou and from there the next day I was brought down to Holton and processed into the jail and then sat down for a minute literally a minute to speak with a the attorney of the day that was there um, offering a plea agreement for my charges um, a 90 day sentence with all but 14 days suspended and to be put on to this administrative release which is another set of problems for one year um, I accepted that plea agreement and spent two weeks in jail and now for the next year no matter what happens come the ninth when I have to go for the second set of charges to see the same judge and answer for those because of this plea agreement I have a little bit of a problem now because the first stipulation of this agreement that I am to uphold to says that I am to refrain from all criminal conduct in violation of federal, state, and local laws. Now, I have no problem with that, except for the use of my medicine. Because there, even though it's legal, sta state and locally, it is still federally illegal. And the fact that President Obama has put uh, a no, no touch kind of situation on the states that have this medical marijuana law um, kind of leaves me in a, a catch-22 because it's a medicine now I, I asked the attorney that the attorney of the day and then very quickly he responded that it would be viewed as a medicine in that situation and that as long as I was certified to use it it, it would not violate this agreement so I'm I'm hoping that's correct when I go to see on the ninth that judge again and answer for the first two charges um, I'm going to plead not guilty and I'm going to ask for a judge uh, for an attorney a court appointed attorney because I no matter how this looks to them I feel no guilt for this I've had to hide all of my life the fact that well not all of my life but for a good portion of my life I've had to hide the fact that marijuana was the one and only true medicine for me the one and only medicine that achieves the goal of medicine for me which is to better the patient's life without causing any other problems marijuana does this for me very successfully and now I have a lot of stuff on my plate to deal with I'm praying I'm praying and I'm praying I'm praying so hard that God of gods is going to come down and, and, and rest on that judge's shoulders come the 9th of September when he looks into my eyes and sees that I am not a criminal deserving of all of this punishment. I am simply a patient who needs to be on the correct medicine. And needs to be left alone to do that here in my home where I am king right king of king of the castle right well America are we as free as we are supposed to be according to our Constitution this is a question that I'm asking myself very very hard these days because twice now I've had the police the the authority of the state come into my home 
and penalize me severely, severely, for trying to care for myself and not harming anyone else in the process. And why? All of this started, all of this, none of this would have happened at all. The police even told me that had my drug addict neighbor not informed them that I was doing this for myself in my home, they would never have had a reason to come here at all. They would never have known about me. And you know what? I was happy with that, and they were too. So thanks to the revenge efforts of a drug addict who I threw from my house and refused to share my medicine with for rec recreational purposes, has now resulted in a whole pot very bad stuff that I have to deal with. I ask you, look into your hearts, look into your souls, and if you've been following my playlist, you know everything that this patient has gone through in his attempts to gain the lawful right to take care of myself the way I need to. And ask yourselves, is this fair? Where's the justice in this? I leave that to you. And yes, as I said, this is my battle dress uniform for this cause. I only wear it on occasions like this when the odds are so overwhelmingly against me that it seems hopeless. I don my battle dress uniform and I stand in front of it and I say, I will not stop. I will not let this hurt me. I will not let this stop me. I will not lay down. My only quest from the very beginning, when I told you to watch for what it is that I am asking for has been the right to live my life according to the needs of my life and take care of myself according to what is right for me. I haven't asked anyone to agree with me. I haven't asked anyone for advice because this is my life in all of our lives the one thing I want you to know for sure without question is that you are the final doctor in your life you are the only one who knows what works for you only you have the power to say yes or no to what is offered you on your plate. Is it right that the state can come into my home and penalize me for doing what I know I need to do? That's that's what I ask, and what I want is the right to take care of myself, as I need to take care of myself, and to be left alone to do that. I will not harm you in any way. I don't ask for your 
anything. You're, you're allowed to live your life the way you need to live it, just as I should be allowed to live mine the way I need to live mine. And that's, that's what I ask, that's what I want, that's what I need. I don't need this. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. I mean, no one any harm, and damn sure wouldn't wish this on anyone. So I leave you with that, and let you know that I do not lay down. This is not going to stop me. I'm going to plead not guilty the second time around. I'm not going to accept the plea agreement. I'm going to make a stand for my rights. And I'm going to ask an attorney to help me do that in a way that gets me out of as much of this as can be gotten out of and prevents any more from piling up because that's also in the Constitution. I am, I have the right to representation. So we'll see what happens comes the ninth. By then, thank God, I will have seen the doctor that huh, whose practice is the only one in the state, apparently, that issues the this, this certification for people like myself to use medical marijuana legally. That and some other stuff that I have will hopefully also weigh heavily in my favor, in my defense. I'm praying, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, people, friends, brothers and sisters. The fight goes on. I'm looking at uh, a lot of stuff to deal with. I need your strength. I need your love. I need your support. Anything that you could say, anything that you could do, anything that you can dream of, that will help me in this situation, believe me, it's not only helping me, it's going to help all of us, eventually, the first thing I think we need to do is get rid of the federal influence here, the federal government has no right to intervene in personal lives and lifestyles and, and, and state affairs. This is a constitutional guarantee, and we should get back to that. I'm in total agreement with that. So, I'll let you go for now, and let you know that, again, you know, I'm, I'm living with your power, and I'm fighting the fight, and it's not going to end here. Peace. Peace.